Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the worst products of 2020, as in the most disappointing products that I have been very blessed to review for you guys so that we can stay away from these and actually invest our money in products that work, products that are actually truly worth it. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Jenna. I am a huge Friends fan, as you can see with Hugsy right behind me, but I also, most importantly, love talking about high-end and luxury makeup, and I solely review that category so that I can help women like myself invest their money wisely when it comes to that high-end and ultra expensive makeup category. So if you want to see all of these products definitely to be avoided, then just keep watching. The first product I want to talk about, I have a list of everything because I had to go through all of my videos that I've done just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'm going to go right to the beginning of January 2020 when I reviewed a product by Charlotte Tilbury. Now this is the Miracle Eye Brightening Duo and this was actually a very subpar for me. Now interestingly, I don't see this on Charlotte Tilbury's website anymore. I only see the mini one of this, so I do think she's most likely discontinuing and phasing this out. This was a dual ended product that had a concealer type product on one end and a brightening cream on the other end. The concealer part didn't really have, I think it had like light to max medium coverage when it came to that. So if you really had truly dark circles or something to actually cover, I didn't think that this was going to be the product to do that for you. The cream as well was subpar. It was something that I didn't think deserved the price point that it did. I believe it was 55 Canadian dollars for this thing. And I think it was supposed to mimic the YSL Touche Clot. It also has the same like clicking nature in packaging. And to me, the YSL combined a brightening feature with their concealer type product to really add that medium coverage, but also to brighten underneath the eye. The Charlotte one being two steps. And like I said, having subpar formulations didn't work for me. This is the first disappointing product of the year. The next product that I I think I reviewed in in around Valentine's Day or early spring perhaps was the Natasha Denona Love Palette. A lot of you guys actually talked to me in the comments about this one and said you must have gotten a dud palette because my palette just doesn't seem to be like that. And actually this is the update with this palette. So the palette that I received, I actually received it well I purchased it and I received it amongst probably some of the first bulk of the products being made because I got it right at release date and the the formulations for me were really stiff and that was something that was definitely different from a Natasha Denona. She usually has a lot of creamy consistencies, a lot of easy to blend and smooth, richly pigmented formulas. This was something that was hard for me to blend. The mattes were super patchy. I wondered what was going on because this isn't her first rodeo at making a palette, but she always does seem to change her formulations up. So it's always something to consider. So I actually found out from a couple creators that there is a certain batch code with this one that does result in a dud palette and that was the same batch code that I had. Now I wish I remembered the dang batch code but here's what I'm going to recommend to you guys now in the meantime. If you happen to get one of those palettes where it's patchy, it's dry, it's hard to blend out, definitely try to seek out and get in exchange for that because very possibly this is a dud batch or part of that batch. Keep your eyes peeled, but this was a palette that unfortunately was a miss for me simply because I got a really dried out production of this one and it didn't measure up to par. The next product that was a huge disappointment for me this year, okay, actually comes from a brand called Biologique Recherche. This is a skincare brand, so important to note that because this was a foundation-based product that actually had serum-like qualities in it. It was supposed to be a hybrid between a foundation slash base product, but also have some skincare benefits, if you will. So this is the Serum Detente, and not only does it have like, I think it's like four or five shades, pretty terrible when it 
comes to shade matching, if I'm going to be honest, either you had a match or you didn't. It was very obvious. That is the huge downfall for this production of product. But also this was an extremely matte product. It offered more coverage than I thought it would. I think it was advertised as a very light and sheer, just kind of wash of base product and meant to kind of even out, but not provide a ton of coverage. Really hone in on showing that natural skin through. This was something that was a huge fail for me because it just didn't work out when it came to applying. I felt like it applied pretty patchy. I felt like it was extremely matte and kind of crusty. I am not a matte girl, just so you guys know. If I'm wearing a matte product, whether it be a lipstick or a base, it has to have a semi-radiant finish to it. Or if it's a lip product, it has to be a comfortable matte. So this was something that already just kind of ugh, made me not like it. Plus it's so expensive. Ugh. Unfortunately, it was a miss for me. Certainly not something I would recommend because it's so expensive for what it is. Next, I want to talk about the Chanel Hydra Mist Setting Spray. This was also something I reviewed in a hits and misses way back in the spring. Oh, I had some pretty high hopes for this because a lot of you guys really like it. So just kind of like a disclaimer with this video, if this is a product that you love, any product I'm talking about moving forward, please don't be offended. This is my personal experience. And if you you love it, it's important to enjoy it. Just take my experience for what it is, informative if you want, something somewhat helpful if you're looking to buy it, it's okay, we can still be friends. <laughs> Not only is Chanel heavily fragranced, but it's one that I feel like I either love or hate sometimes their makeup. It's not always consistently great for me. So the Hydra Mist was one that I felt gave me really clogged pores. It enlarged my, my pores, like, I mean, it didn't probably physically enlarge them, but it almost emphasized them, especially in like my nose area where the pores are a little bit bigger and it does have a strong fragrance. A lot of setting sprays out there do. If you're looking for a setting spray of a high-end brand that is great and not scented, Hourglass has a great one. But this is one that I was willing to give a shot because so many people loved it and unfortunately it just fell short. Chanel also has a luxury price point and for this product, unfortunately, I didn't think it was worth investing in. All right, now let's go back also to spring, early summer where Morphe 2 came out and this was heavily influenced by TikTok megastars, Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio. Now Morphe is a brand I don't typically touch on on my channel, but because Morphe is available at Sephora Canada, I've had some requests to do some Morphe here and there. So this next fail is actually their eye pot. It was called like an eye jelly and this had an interesting consistency to it, but my biggest problem with this one was how easily it creased. Even if I had primer on, I just could, for the life of me, never get this thing to work. I actually have, as you guys can see, some hoodedness to my eyes and it's very blatantly obvious when it doesn't work out. And this is definitely one that didn't. Not only was it kind of sheer upon pigmentation and upon swatch, this was something that definitely had to be built up, but as you built it up, it got more and more heavy on the lid and kind of crease-like also. It really didn't last that long before it creased, especially in the center there at my deepest crease. And and probably about a couple of hours when I started to see it separate. I much, much prefer my Charlotte Tilbury cream shadows because they have that creamy consistency. And for some reason, it's a lot creamier than the Morphe. It seems to glide over the lid with more pigmentation, but to the point where you don't need as much to have that beautiful result. And it seems to not settle into the creases, which is the biggest thing for me. The next fail was the Morphe 2 foundation. Also from the same line, this was very similar, I think, to what they were trying to get at with the Glossier foundation. It's kind of like a tint that Glossier offers. I think this is what Morphe was trying to get at with this line because it was meant to be probably more on the younger side. The D'Amelio sisters are kind of appeasing that, you know, teenage bracket. But this was a huge dud for me because of the lack of setting time. This was one that did have a radiant finish to the skin so it had a really good start, but it wouldn't set down for the life of me. It was so, so tacky for such a long time. I was really waiting for it to settle in so I could do the next steps in my routine, which is setting it with powder and, you know, proceeding with the rest of my face products. And I wonder if it was because of the goal to really grab the younger bracket of makeup users. And maybe the thought was that they take a little bit more time to blend in and to apply. Could very well be, but definitely something that I didn't personally enjoy. Let's talk about this next setting spray that also is a sun 
sunscreen. <laughs> this is from Kula and this was a big disappointment. Now I got this from the Jilly Box, which is a Jillian Harris. She's a Canadian influencer, by the way. She has a subscription box that I think is probably one of the best subscription boxes ever. And I am not a subscription box person. I was pretty excited because I'm really trying to get into reapplying my sunscreen throughout the day. I think it's really important, especially if you have makeup. I thought this was going to be the best of both worlds. A lot. And when I mean a lot of you, <laughs> a lot of you warned me on how bad this one stings. They said, do not get it anywhere near your eyes because it stings. So I didn't do that. But even it burned my skin. I don't know, like my skin, I wouldn't even call my skin overly sensitive. And I still found that I was like, this actually has some heat like behind it in not a good way. But also when you look at the back of this product, it tells you to actually spray it into your hands and then apply it to the face. This is something I don't think anybody would do. If you are a makeup user and you see it, like for instance, this is my <laughs> Glow Recipe Watermelon Mist. Like if it has a nozzle like this, you're gonna spray it all over your face just by default. But if you don't read the directions, it's actually not meant to be that. So apparently using your hands is a bit better, but practicality wise, if I have my full face done, I'm not gonna then spray this into my hands and massage it into my makeup that's already been done. So this is something for me that was just practicality wise, why? And the fact that it stung a definite worst product of the year. Okay, now let's get into one of the more controversial reviews that I did this year. A lot of you guys actually disagreed with me on this and that's totally normal. I think that I'm always open to differing opinions as long as things are said respectfully. And like I said previous, I'm just reporting on my experience and I want to be helpful to you. So take it how you will. But this next product was the Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid Eyeshadows. A lot of you guys love these. In theory, these are gorgeous, gorgeous products. I love how much they shift. They actually have beautiful duo trio kind of effects on the lid. I think they're amazing. But for some reason, I could not for the life of me get them to work where they would not crease. So weird because I know a lot of you guys said that you had hooded eyes also and they didn't crease on you. It was so weird. I don't know if I was just doing something wrong with application. I tried with primer, without, thin layer, a lot. I tried so many different things, but unfortunately this was something that just didn't work out for me. One thing that I will say about these is that they do offer a little bit more blending time, which I like, than some of the other liquid eyeshadows out there. Sometimes they can dry really fast and then you have to like apply them and almost go speedy, like trying to <laughs> blend them into your eyes before they set. This did actually give you an allowable time that I thought was reasonable to actually blend out into the edge so it didn't look like a hard line. You can definitely do that more like editorial kind of trendy cool look with like just like eyeliner or something like that where it is a kind of sharp line but you don't have to use them that way. So that was something that I really loved was the versatility but like I said the creasing I couldn't get behind and for me it ruined it because it just separated right in the middle. I also found for some reason that it emphasized texture a little bit and I don't know if it's because of how foiled they were. So if you guys are a fan of these I'm so happy for you that they work out because they are fairly pricey liquid shadows compared to some other products on the market. So if they were a hit for you, that's great. But I actually, because I didn't get them to work for me for whatever reason, and they just were not a hit for me, I actually love using the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome Eyeshadow Palette that has those three duo slash trio chrome eyeshadows. Do check out my review of that if you haven't seen it, but this was a product that still offered that same kind of result, a little bit more muted because it was powder versus that foiled liquid shadow formulation, but it did kind of satisfy my need for a shifting eyeshadow and one that didn't crease on me. The next fail actually comes from Hourglass. Now, this next product is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder. And this is kind of like a hybrid product that they actually released this year. And this wasn't something that worked out for me, unfortunately, because there was just too much shimmer for it to be an all over base product. And it was too little shimmer to be an highlighter. <laughs> so I was like, what am I gonna do with this? This is not something that I'd recommend investing in. If you are going to go for an hourglass product, they have amazing blushes, amazing base face products like the pressed powders, the ambient lighting powders. There are six pan palettes that come out in the holidays. Way, way better, you guys. This little kind of hybrid thing just was a big mess and unfortunately another worst product of the year. 
Now let's get on to Makeup by Mario. He did do a full brand release this year and there were quite a few products that I reviewed on my channel. If you haven't seen that video where I do a whole brand review, I will link it in the description box if you're interested. This is the Makeup by Mario Crystal Reflector and this was supposed to be a highlighter but also you could apply it to the eyes. It was supposed to be kind of a multifunctional product. This was something that had an ultra smooth like gel consistency almost resembling like, you know, Pat McGrath's like special shades that have that almost like gel-like, just beautiful, smooth texture to them similar to that. In practicality, I actually applied this to the cheek in my trial and then I did a lot more testing. This is something that has a heavy shimmer component, extremely heavy. For me and my preferences, no bueno. I really like my shimmer to be more diffused on the cheekbone because if somebody looks at you and has a conversation from a few feet away and sees like like little chunks of glitter on your face, for me, that's not a good look. So this product on camera looked beautiful, like absolutely beautiful, but studio lighting like this is not, like this is an artificial world here. <laughs> I try to review things also from the fact that we're going to be walking around in sunlight. This was not a product practicality wise in real life, would look good at least for people that have my makeup preferences. This one did set down a little bit, but I just, the, the chunks of glitter really threw me off. And this was something that I just really wish had performed a lot better. The next product that I think was one of the worst products of the year, also coming from Makeup by Mario, is actually the like eye gloss kind of product that he put out. It's called the Master Glow Highlight. And this was something that had so many people super excited because really it was supposed to be just like a clear gloss kind of effect. You could put it on the eye and it would look just like you know, like beautiful, natural, very subtle shine to the lid. You could also apply it to the cheekbone for a very subtle highlight. And this was something that also really flopped for me because it just never set. Oh, this one just was so, <laughs> it stuck to my baby hairs that are right here, but mine like stuck to it and then kind of curled. It looked really weird. I was like, no. Plus when I tested on the eye as well, it also didn't set down. So it just wasn't a good look for me. Again, it's probably more so used for the editorial looks and for like photos and things like that. But practicality wise, not something that I ever saw myself picking up again, and certainly not something that I would ever recommend to you. If you are wanting to check something out from his line, I do recommend the matte palette as well as the shimmer palette. Consistency is fantastic among shades. And if you are a artist, it works for you as well. But if you are more so like a makeup lover like me, practicality wise, again, if you like mattes, just buy the mattes. But if you want to have a bit of both, you unfortunately do have to buy both palettes. So it is what it is, but definitely those two products are much more consistent. All right, the next brand I wanna talk about that also released this year is Lauren Conrad Beauty. This is one, you guys, that I also talked about at length about which products worked and which products did not work. And the one thing that a lot of you guys did inform me about with this brand is that they do have a focus on using like recyclable products. All of the things in the makeup line are recyclable and fully recyclable. That does speak to things, which I will talk about yet. That being said, the product products themselves still weren't always a hit for me. <laughs> the first product being the lipstick. This is just called the lipstick, I believe. It is a very matte finish, and the one that I picked up also had a weird smell to it. When you get makeup as a young kid and you get that like Walmart kit that had like every eyeshadow color with that flip up lid and had like eyeliners and lip liners and lipsticks and all that, and you have that weird smell to them, that's what this reminded me of, unfortunately. So that was a big turn off for me and it was also very very matte which was more of like the drying uncomfortable way of the matte definitely ones that were drying collected into my lip lines didn't really like how crepey it made my lips look unfortunately it just wasn't a good look so this was the first miss the second miss from her line was the blush and lip duo this was something that also kind of similar to the makeup by mario type idea and experience very very sticky Ugh, like it just makes me feel icky when something is sticky on my face and won't actually set down. I really am a fan of making things set, smooth. <laughs> this offered a very subtle, like sheer tint of color. It's not meant to be very heavily 
pigmented. I also found that it was very patchy upon application, so I really had to work certain parts in and other parts were smoother than some parts. So it was a bit more of a troubling product to actually apply and practicality wise, eh, like the blendability wasn't the best. The next thing was the pearl highlight and this was also a Lauren Conrad beauty item. This is also one that I just felt upon application pretty patchy. There were certain parts that were very pigment heavy, some that had no pigment at all, and it did actually lift up the base makeup a little bit. So that was something to also keep in mind. I think it was more so suited for people that weren't really wearing base makeup because if you wear even a tinted moisturizer, I felt like it just lifted up that pigment and really kind of made it a little messy. And this was something that wasn't able to be built up. It was just kind of like it maxed out at a certain point because if you kept adding layers and layers and layers, it kind of breaks apart more of your foundation or base underneath and patchy and patchy as well. So kind of like a losing game, this was definitely another worst item this year. The Lauren Conrad products that I do love, her eyeliner I think is a big, big hit. It's actually something that comes very close to my Stila eyeliner, not quite the same, but it is a really good eyeliner if you're interested in supporting her brand. I also like the lip glosses too. Those are really nice and smoothing on the lips, but those are the only two hits I've had from the brand so far. Let's talk about Rare Beauty. Now this is another brand that came out this year from Selena Gomez. And the one thing I really like about this brand is all the positive messaging around it. She also has very easy to open items, which is amazing. And there were a couple products that I loved, which I've already talked about. The liquid blush is one of my favorites. The shade Bliss is gorgeous, you guys. But there are some mega fails here too, unfortunately. So the first one being, I'm gonna read it off here because I didn't quite remember the name, I had to look it up. This is the Rare Beauty with Gratitude Dewy Lip Balm. This one, oh, <laughs> tasted so bad. We're talking about a lip product, you guys. Inevitably, lip products get into our mouths. It's kind of gross, but it's true. The taste alone was horrific. I couldn't even describe it in that video. I had such a hard time. Rubbery, um, plasticky just so, so gross. So I would stay away from this one. I love her lip souffles though. They have kind of like a light stain, which is beautiful, but those lip balms, man, oh, <laughs> so bad with that taste. They also transferred so easily. It didn't even set at all. Like we're talking, even just taking a sip of water through a straw, I felt was like <laughs> my lip product moving off of my lips. No, no, no. <laughs> I shuddered just thinking about that taste. The next product that didn't work out for me was the Liquid Touch Brightening Concealer. I'm actually a big fan of the foundation and both of them kind of have similar packaging, but the concealer just didn't work for me. I felt like it creased pretty quickly and this one also seemed to fade away pretty fast. The longevity of it was not amongst even eight hours to me, which I think is basically the minimum at this point for makeup to last. We really want at least an eight hour workday for it to look somewhat reasonable. I don't think that's too hard to ask for. And and because the market is so saturated, there are great products out there. You have to just use that money for the best things. You can't buy everything. And for this concealer, definitely a miss. The last product from Rare Beauty that disappointed me this year was her Positive Light Luminizer. Similar problems actually to the Lauren Conrad Luminizer. Very inconsistent in application on the cheek, very patchy as well. Also more of a subtle product, so probably something that does speak to my preferences more so, but this was one that picked up the foundation underneath as well, and it just wasn't my favorite. It did have a wand applicator too, just like the foundation and the concealer, but this was one that I just remember being like, dang, you know, like the liquid highlighters that I love, which aren't that many, but there are a few. And that is the Marc Jacobs one is great. I also love the Charlotte Tilbury ones. Those are fantastic also. They just have a consistency upon application and they blend into the skin really well and they don't lift anything underneath. So good options if you're looking for something like this, but the Rare Beauty one was also a disappointment. We are on to the last two products that are disappointing of this year. The next one, you guys, is really hard for me to say and it was really hard for me to make a video on this also. I did get quite a few comments asking me why it was so hard because I don't personally know Wayne Goss, but I actually have friends of mine that I would consider very close to me that know him, admire him and love him. I do admire him, I admire his skill and I love 
other products in his line. The brushes are great. The blush and highlight duos are great. The lip products are great. This did disappoint me hugely. And it was something that I do think is really catered to a certain makeup user, not somebody like me. If you haven't seen my full review on that, I will also link it in the description box for you. But this is the Wayne Goss Pearl Moonstone Palette. And I hate to say it, but it was a disappointing product this year. It is difficult to talk about a fellow beauty creator and the downfalls of their products because you want to support them. You don't want to give them bad publicity in any way. So that's why it's hard to say the truth about things that don't actually work. But it's also really important that I remain honest and integrous with my audience. So this product is something that that is catered to somebody that does like sheer pigmentation, like sheer to light. The black in this palette, I think, was great. It is very sheer and it's very dry upon swatch, but it does have that nice comfort of buildability, which makes it great for all makeup lovers, for all levels. I also love the blue shimmer in this palette. It literally saved me when I was working with this, but those are the only two shades that I actually liked. The peach shade in here had very little pigmentation payoff. It was very, very dry and to me barely worked as a highlight, like a brow highlight, but that's it. There was no pigment when you actually put it on your lid at all. It was very hard to work with that way. The grays in here also a little bit redundant when it comes to color story. I found that they varied very minorly. The problem with them also was the patchiness. I just found that very inconsistent when you actually apply them to the lid. And that was something that made it actually harder for me to work with. So even though his goal is to make it such an easy to work with palette, for me, the patchiness actually made it harder to work with. So this was something that also was a bit of a disappointment. The last product in this worst makeup of 2020, actually I just talked about on my channel recently. These are <laughs> the Charlotte Tilbury Lip and Cheek Tints. These are called the Tinted Love Line. These are going to be coming back. They had like a limited release run, so to speak, for a couple of weeks. And these were the biggest, oh, like even worse than the Miracle Eye Duo, you guys, from the beginning of this video. These were so bad, so underwhelmed with these. And a lot of you guys agree with me, which sucks because they're so pricey. These are $40 each. <laughs> and these are supposed to be a lip product, but also a cheek product, both of them being light tints. So pigmentation is not super rich. These, you guys, I got two shades. Not only do they settle to look almost identical to each other, <laughs> which was weird. I got Santa Euphoria, which is more of like a beige, and Petal Pink, which is supposed to be a brighter pink. And yet both of them seem to settle on my lips and cheeks relatively similarly. So that was the first thing that was really weird, but it also was really drying. It also faded away really fast. It was a weird watery formula. I would apply it to my lips. That was, I guess, the best way out of the two to use it because I didn't find the cheek tint to be very easy to work with or to apply. You can layer it for a couple of layers I would say, but then it sets and then it doesn't move, which is supposed to be good, but yet it had a slight tackiness to the lips. So as you can tell, my preferences are more glowy, more creamy, more smooth, kind of didn't hit any of those marks. The packaging also resembled a drugstore item, which for that price point, really underwhelmed me. Definitely something that I am super disappointed in. So when it does come back in the new year, I still don't recommend buying them. All right, guys, what are your worst makeup products for 2020? I would love to know. We do have a little appearance from Harvey here. He was just sitting in the sun, so he's probably hot. And once again, yawning from all the bright lights. <laughs> I will be doing a best of 2020 also. So stay tuned for that. Do subscribe in order to get notified from that video. That's going to be so amazing. And until my next one, take care and stay safe. Bye guys. You and me, everything that we've been through has made us strong. You won't believe we've had our great, but somewhere there's a light inside of us. It shows the